Hey everybody, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Thanks for coming on by to check out another video. This is my favorite type of video to do. It's the what sold on eBay video in which I cover the top 10 most expensive and most profitable items that sold in my eBay store for a particular month. In this one, I'm gonna cover the month of August 2018. As you will see, it was a great month with lots of items that sold over diverse categories, so I want you to pay attention to that. I don't just sell things in one particular category. They are spread out, and I think that is a key that helps me make sales every single day. So take some notes. There's some great be on the lookout items here. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to come across some of these things as well during your picking adventures and make some profit off of them too. So let's start off with the first item. We'll work our way back to the most expensive item, but this is something you will come across sometimes at garage sales or estate sales. They're known as firefighter marks or fireman marks or plaques. They're made out of cast iron. There are original versions and there are reproduction versions. This is a reproduction version. Now, if it was a uh, an original, uh, this would be something that would sell for hundreds of dollars or more, but this is uh, actually a reproduction. Now, reproductions can still sell for a good price, uh, they just have to you know, be in pretty good condition. As you can see here, the condition is great. The colors really pop. It's a great display item for someone who's into cast iron pieces, signs, um, someone who has firefighters in their family. So this has cross appeal to a lot of different types of collectors. The reason why these were used back in the old days was to display on the outside of a building or a house to let people know that their house was protected in the case of a fire, be it through an insurance company or a local firefighter a company that would come by to extinguish the fire. This would help discourage arsonists from trying to put someone into financial ruin. Uh, it would also be a sign to let people know that uh, if you help and come and put out the fire before the firefighters come, if it was an insurance company's name on the outside, that they would be handsomely rewarded by the insurance company. So, you know, there's a nice throwback retro element to these that people love to have for this reason. Uh, now, I'm going to do a separate video likely pretty soon on the use of keywords because when I put the, up the haul video in which I found these for $5 a piece, now I found four of these there were two that were identical and then there was which was separate from this one then there was this one and another one when i put them up uh, some of the people who watched the video told me that they thought i was only going to be able to get about thirty dollars for these and that um, um some uh, uh one person had mentioned that uh, he passes on these when he sees these because doesn't do really well with them uh, and that may be the case, however, what I want to point out is that the use of keywords is really important and that's why I had um, a, a pretty good feeling I'd be able to sell it for close to $80, which is what I predicted. Now, I took a best offer of $70 for this, and again, I'll go over this in another video, but the reason why I was able to sell this for this price is through the strategic use of key words that you see in that title. There are other people that are actually selling this exact same fire mark for around $30, but I knew if I put in the keywords that certain people would type in to search for these and wouldn't type in to bring up those $30 pieces, that that would help me sell this item. It might take a little longer, but that's what would help make the sale, and sure enough, it did. So that will come across uh, through another video that I'll do. Uh, let's go into this one. Oh, by the way, with this one here uh, and any kind of heavy cast iron items, the way I ship this is I wrap it in bubble wrap, I protect it with two pieces of cardboard on the outside, tape it together, and I put it in a flat rate um, a priority padded envelope so it goes out for six dollars and ninety cents once you get your eBay shipping discount that's important for these heavy items like this um, uh, is to is to make sure you're shipping at flat rate because if you're paying by weight you're gonna pay up especially if it goes far away all right let's go to this one here uh, this also was displayed in a prior haul video in which I bought this off of uh, one of my Craigslist ads that I set up and somebody was getting rid of a whole bunch of collectibles in their house. The guy sold it. It was from his son. Uh, by the way, that's where a lot of these things come from. Like this one right here, this fireman's mark, this actually was being sold in a, it was, it was, it was a garage sale, but it was a garage sale run by the sisters 
of uh, a, their brother who had passed away, and he was someone who collected uh, fire uh, fighting uh, material, among other things. But uh, this person here collected Masters of the Universe stuff. It was in the basement. Now, a lot of the stuff in the basement was filthy and dirty, if you remember that video, but a lot of the things could be cleaned up. This was something that jumped right out to me. Uh, it's it's a it's a pretty rare item. It comes from 1983. It was made by Janix. It's sealed in the box, which is what really helps it sell. It's an old toothbrush set for He-Man Masters of the Universe. But I do really really well with selling old Masters of the Universe stuff. In fact, right behind me right now, I have an entire box full. Like I'll just you know grab right now. I've got an entire box full of Masters of the Universe items. Uh, so I, you know, you just check the bottoms of them typically, or if it's in a box, you just check the back of the box. You'll see that the the, the, uh, the date will typically be in the 1980s if you found any of the vintage stuff. And if you did, you should definitely pick it up because it sells really well. So uh, this one I had up for 92.50. I wound up taking a best offer of 70. I was hoping to get a little bit more for it, hoping to get like around $100 for it. But $70 isn't bad for what I paid for the entire collection. Um, wound up making uh, making out really well on this. So um, you know this is uh, this is an item that would be challenging to find this exact one. However, just keep in mind if you're new to you know vintage toys and collectibles to just look out for any kind of older Masters of the Universe items, also known as Motus. You'll see that right there. That's used a lot in terms of searches. People will type in Motu, so make sure you know what that means when you see that Masters of the Universe. All right, now this one cracks me up. Uh, I did sell this for the price you see here, $74.99. Uh, this was a uh, the reason why it cracks me up is because I let me show you the inside of it so that this is uh, the outer shell of a box of books. It's a box of um, books for a series called Naruto uh, sh um, Naruto Jump. You'll see when I open up in a minute what it looks like inside. Uh, computers acting a little bit slow here, but these are called uh, manga. Here they are. These are called manga books. And this is what you'll look for on the outside. Look for anything that says Naruto. Even if they don't come in this big box like this, just try to pick them up and sell them in lots. They sell really well. Now, originally, um, this came in a set of 1 to 27. Now, as you can see here, these are not the books 1 to 27. Some of the books are here. You see there's number 1, then it skips to 12, and it goes all the way up to 43. Uh, this was kind of a random but somewhat continuous run of books that were put into this shell that I picked up from somebody who was just trying to clear space, and he sold me this along with a ton of other comic books and books. In fact, this is one of them right here. A whole bunch of other collectibles uh, for, uh, he didn't even want any money. He just wanted 10 Iron Man comic books, if you remember this. 10 Iron Man comic books that had no significant monetary value. Uh, he just liked Iron Man, and I happened to have the, these books laying around that he wanted, and so uh, he traded them for me for this. So I didn't even spend any money for this and sold these uh, for 77 uh, no, what was it, $75. And um, here's what the books look like on the outside. So they're basically Japanese anime or Japanese animation, uh, and this is what you'll kind of see on the outside. So they really stand out. Look for that, again, that orange word, Naruto. This is what the backs will look like. Again, you really can't miss it. Just check them over for condition. Make sure the spines aren't damaged or anything like that. And they go in this foldable case. And if you could find anything in these foldable cases, those are some posters that were included inside that I displayed. But if you could find these foldable cases, they are really collectible. I sold one of these uh, last month or the month before um, for a different series, and they just sell really well. So, um, again, just be on the lookout for those. Pick them up. You're not going to typically find them at garage sales or estate sales you really got to pick something like this up based on a deal you're making with a collector through craigslist or some type of trade like i mentioned okay uh this one here is a recurring um item at the primetime treasure uh ebay store for best sales of the month i mean i joke around with my wife that i am going to send my kids to college based on sales of this lady's uh booty now 
Um, this is just one uh, image of this picture if you haven't seen it before, but it is a three-in-one Jack Daniels sign. Many of you are familiar with my videos, know all about these. I source them for $10 a piece. They cost me about $8 to ship, and um, they wind up selling anywhere between $55 and $75. I did sell uh, a bunch uh, last month. Uh, this one did sell for $75. And so um, I'm not listing all of them because I just it'd just be boring to show you the same ones over and over. But I did sell a bunch of these last month. Uh, this girl is what helps sell the sign. This is my best selling one. There is one with a brunette in it. There is one with a couple of girls who have tattoos. But all of them have Jack Daniels and something else that appeals to guys in it, be it a pool table like this or some other type of image. There is one that I actually sell uh, for more around $55 that does not have a girl in it. It has Jack Daniels and Harley Davidson bikes and but no girl. But you can see without the girl, it shaves about $20 off the price. So that is something guys want to display uh, and have in their man cave. Or I've had people buy it um, and it gets shipped to like a business, like an automobile uh, business, you know, some a bunch of guys probably hanging it up in the shop or something like that, and they probably all chip in on it uh, for the price. But um, it's amazing. As soon as I t sell this, I put it down, I put another one up. I've got another four watchers in like you know, ten seconds. It's a crazy. I'm exaggerating, but uh, they come in pretty quick and they don't last too long. So, and I've got another probably another 12, 14 of these plus uh, you know another 12, 14 of um, some of the other girls. So. Uh, just keep listing them and just keep selling them. Uh, this is scaling. I talked about this recently. Um, it really is helpful because I don't have to keep taking uh, pictures of this item. Soon as this sells, I just go to sell similar right up here. Sell a similar item. I press that and that's it. And the next one's up and uh, I'm on to working on other items. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Some of you may remember this doll when you were younger. This is Saucy. Uh, Saucy was a really cool doll. I jumped at this when I saw this. You may remember this from my haul video because the first thing I actually saw was this box and it jumped out at me and I saw that it was Mattel. Now Mattel is a name you really want to pay attention to because Mattel is the same company that makes the Masters of the Universe figures. Uh, so uh, they made a lot of great vintage toys back in the day including dolls and if you could find you know, a doll like this in the original box, uh, I wound up getting this for $5. The person who originally purchased this was someone who purchased it at an auction, and he was just practically giving it away to me. I couldn't believe when he said $5. Now, the cool thing about this doll, if you haven't seen it before, you could see her eyes right there, is that as you move uh, her arm, I believe it is the left arm, as you twist the left arm around, you could see that it's connected to gears in her face, which help make these... Uh, strange faces so her lips will literally change her eyes will change her cheeks will change I mean look at this one I mean she looks uh, she looks wasted right here um, so I mean it is hilarious these these faces that she makes it's just a really cool doll this is not the original outfit if it was the original outfit it would uh, bring in some more money uh, but overall if you could store something like this for five dollars and um, you know uh, sell it for uh, you know, 7750. Uh, this wound up going overseas, by the way. For some reason, there were a lot of people in Ireland who wanted this item, or Scotland. Uh, it was Scotland actually, I, and I'm not sure why that is. But um, uh, anyway, it was a, it was a it was a great sale. So be on the lookout for Saucy and anything Mattel from the 1970s, 1980s, especially if it's in the original box. I pretty much don't care what it is. You're probably going to make a good profit on it if you could source it low. Uh, this one I wound up taking a best offer of uh, $80 for. I got it for around a dollar uh, through a big collectibles purchase. Now this might look like a comic book to you, but it is not. It is a version of Frankenstein that um, the cover was. Um, look at that's really look at the detail there. The cover was done by Bernie uh, Wrightson. Uh, he was the illustrator. Now Bernie. Uh, Wrightson is a very, very famous uh, artist in the comic book land, especially for his drawings of the character Swamp Thing, which I grew up reading as a kid. 
And so that's how I know when I see the name Bernie Wrightson, and then you could see there, Introduction by Stephen King, that this is something that would have some potential value. If you looked inside the book, you would see that it's actually not a comic book, as I mentioned earlier. It is a, an actual book, but there's illustrations by Bernie Wrightson, but it's actually, you know, a real book. Uh, and, you know, that's how uh, that's how you would read it is just like that you know, with some illustrations here and there. It's hard to find. It's out of print. And uh, that's why it sold well. It comes from the 1980s. And uh, again, hard to find. So uh, nice, nice profit, nice flip. Uh, $80 for something purchased for around a dollar. OK, uh, moving on to the next one. Um, now, many of you know, some of you may not, but I do specialize in comic books. And so. Uh, this came as part of the large collection of um, 15 long boxes that uh, that I purchased recently. In fact, later on this morning, I'm going to that same person to buy another six boxes. So I'm um, looking forward to that. But uh, so there were thousands of comic books that I wound up purchasing from this person for um, five hundred dollars. And as you can see here, I sold just six of those for not 114. I did take a best offer of $90. Um, but as you can see, when you can make flips like this and you could just take six out of, um, you know, thousands and, you know, flip it for around $100 and you spend $500 for thousands of comic books, that's how over time you could really make a lot of money and a lot of profit on collections like that. Now, the key thing, if you're not into comic books and maybe you come across some laying around, you want to know the, the, about the Infinity series. Now, this one is called Infinity Gauntlet, and I'll tell you why you want to know about it, is that this is really one of the iconic series that came out more in a more recent modern age. Uh, this character right here that you see in the middle, his name is Thanos, and those gems in the gauntlet on his hand are called the Infinity Gems. And he basically used these to get all these types of powers that help to kill off a lot of um, you know good people and superheroes in the Marvel Universe. And so a lot of the characters had to come together to fight and battle against him. And it really was an iconic series, again, with a lot of iconic superhero characters. So if you have the um you know the, the six of them which is there's a it's a six part series you know you could get around a hundred dollars for them provided that they are in um you know very fine to near mint condition now you may just come across one of them so sometimes you may come across infinity gauntlet number one and for example i had an extra one of those that was in that same box it's just an extra infinity gauntlet number one i sold it for twenty dollars so you may come across just one of them and if you pick it up for a couple bucks, you know, you can make, you know, or a dollar, you know, you could flip it and uh, do really well. Even if you find just one of them, maybe you find number four, number five, number six, you could sell those as well because someone may just be missing that one for uh, a collection that they're trying to complete. So keep that in mind. Also, I did really well selling other parts of this series that I found in the same collection, which is after Infinity Gauntlet, they came out with Infinity War and Infinity Crusade. So uh, keep those in mind as well. The key word to know is infinity. If you, basically, if you see anything with the word infinity on it and it's Marvel Comics, um, look into it if it's in you know pretty decent condition. Uh, look into it in terms of picking it up, making a purchase. You'll probably be able to make a good flip on it. Uh, let's go to the top three. This is where we get into items that uh, sold for over $100. Now, this one, I give full props and credit to my wife, Mrs. Primetime. She picked this up for $3 at a garage sale. She recognized it uh, as something that would be desirable uh, because it is the part of the Lucky brand. Now, I know of the Lucky brand from the Lucky brand jeans that I actually used to wear back in the day, no longer do. But uh, these are, it's a kind of a hilarious brand, uh, the Lucky brand, when you, if you ever see the jeans, when you unzip the fly, it says Lucky You on it. So that's always kind of crack people up. It's kind of a little gimmick that they do. But they also sell other things besides uh, jeans. Uh, this is the brand uh, icon that you would look for. They have a lot of outlet stores now. They're more well known than they used to be when they first came out. But they also make purses and handbags. And, um, you know, this one it has kind of like this uh, 
hoboish kind of um, look to it with the um, you know with the fringes and uh, you know it's kind of it's cantina style uh, leather uh, sold for uh, and that is a buy it now price person uh, purchased it for $110 uh, no negotiations whatsoever obviously the key is uh, condition as well you want to make sure the zipper works and that uh, there's no significant damage but uh, you know that was a great great flip three dollars into a hundred and ten all right, let's go back to comic books for a moment. Um, this I sold, I actually was able to get my hands on two of these. Um, these are graded comic books. I was able to get two Amazing Spider-Man, number 299. Um, I got them from a collect, large collectibles purchase. I sold one of them for, last month for $140, and I just sold another one yesterday for $145. So um, it winds up uh, that uh, this is basically the, the, the key item that, uh, or items that I purchased as part of the collectibles haul that I realized would get me all of my money back or most of my money back for the purchase and then, then everything else would just be uh, profit. So these are items that basically help me make profit on the whole uh, collection. Um, it's kind of the, you know, the thing that uh, just you know, brings back the bulk of my money. So uh, the reason why um, this is a popular uh, book is because, um, two reasons, Todd McFarlane is a famous artist and uh, he really, you know, became very famous in drawing Spider-Man back in the day with the, the intricate looping webs like that and just his art was just amazing, just blew everyone away when it came out. Um, but also, this is close to the 300th issue, which, to give you a sense of how much the 300th issue is worth, I have right now in my eBay store the 300th issue of Amazing Spider-Man that I actually was able to pick up for a very, just for like a couple dollars um, through a, um, a surprise find and a big collectibles estate clear out. Uh, it's in an incredible condition, number 300. It's not even certified and graded like you see here, but that one I have in my eBay store right now for $725, and it has seven watchers right now, and I just put it up recently. So that's how much money you know could be in these uh, comic books, even ones from the 1990s uh, or you know the late 1980s. This one came out in 1988. Another reason why this one is uh, famous is it does have a cameo um, appearance of a character known as Venom, who is in a dark Spider-Man uh, looking suit. Um, there's a movie coming out with Venom in October of this year, so that also is something that makes this um, uh, will you know make anything with Venom on it uh, jump up in price uh, as long as the movie's successful. So uh, again, if you don't, uh, well I shouldn't say again, I mean again because I've talked about it in other videos, but um, this is a certified comic book. So if you're wondering like what's the difference between this, why is it in this slab if you've never seen this kind of thing before compared to you know what I showed you here which are comic books outside the slab. Uh, basically for very important key issues like this um, where you know, there's some importance to the book. People will send them out to companies, the most popular of which is CGC. You can see that right up top. And they will uh, grade the book. They will give it a value anywhere from 0 to 10. It's almost impossible to get a 10, although I have seen it on occasion. It's really rare, though. Um, most people are realistically more searching for a 9.8. 9.6 is very desirable as well. Um, this means it's in near mint plus condition, and people love displaying these as trophies. Um, you could see if you look up close, all of these will get a certification number that's right there. It will tell you what color the pages are inside. Are they white? Are they cream? Are they off white? All of these things are important. It will tell you if anything important happened in the book. Like you can see there, it says Venom cameo and appearance of Chance, which is a character. It will tell you important things in terms of who was involved in writing the story who was involved in doing the art, who did the art on the cover, who did the art on the inside. So anything that's real important about it, it will tell you. It will tell you the year that it was published, the company that published, the name of it, the, the issue, all that type of stuff. So, you know, they're really cool pieces. Collectors, again, love to display these on their walls, on racks and things like that. So that's the whole, you know, certified comic books. They're, people are really looking for those. You're really not going to find these at garage sales or estate sales, typically. You really need to find these through making a a deal and a purchase with a collector and you need to know what you're doing uh, before you make these types of purchases uh, so that you make sure you're investing properly so you could do a lot of research on these just type in CGC 
uh, with the name of the book uh, on eBay's completed sold, and it'll give you a good sense of um, you know what these things have sold for, and then you could do a search for what they are currently going for. All right, I've dragged this out long enough. Let's get to the number one uh, top-selling item in my eBay store for the month of August, and that is the lot of 200 sewing thimbles with the two wood display cases. Uh, this I took a best offer of $200. I am really, really proud of this one. Uh, I'll tell you why. If you remember back to my uh, haul video in which I had to fend off a bully who tried to reach over my area and grab these uh, out of my area and take them away and I had to kind of basically defend myself to make sure I got to purchase these. Um, there was that. That's one reason just in terms of uh, sourcing it. The other was that when I put this up for this price, I wound up getting a lowball offer from somebody of $45. And I told the person, there's no way I know what the value of these things are. And you could see there's all types of thimbles. And look how I displayed it, by the way. I mean, put them in the case and made sure they were front facing. This is what helps sell it. Make sure they were pretty evenly centered. The display is so, so important. Um, person offered me $45 and then the, I, when I told the person there's no way I'm doing that I knew I'd be able to sell them for around 200 by looking up comps for similar thimble collections the key is making sure you have them in these cases too the person wrote me back and said there's no way you're gonna get anything close to what you're asking um, you know everybody knows nobody cares about thimbles the only thing people want are the display cases well why would someone want the display cases of all if no one cares about thimbles so um, I basically just ignored her and just kept it up at the same price and then sure enough someone came across made the offer of um, I think the person offered 175 and so we met in the middle at 200 um, so how did I ship these well uh, basically what I did and it might seem like it took forever but uh, it actually didn't and I uh, my wife helped my daughter helped a little bit is we just uh, quickly wrapped each thimble up once it's sold in um, uh, little pieces of bubble wrap that we just ripped up and you know we didn't um, tape it together I don't think maybe we put a little piece of tape on it but um, uh, and then just stuff them right back into these little compartments and then wrap the whole entire box with bubble wrap and uh, protected it with uh, styrofoam and uh, you know around the edges and then um, just put it in a nice oversized box so they were facing each other um, not outwards and uh, got there no problem and uh, nothing broke you don't want to send these loose because they'll be crashing around the box and then the person's going to get a whole bunch of broken thimbles because a bunch of these are ceramic, that type of stuff. So you have to be careful. So you will come across thimble collections at estate sales. Um, uh, typically, I actually found this at a garage sale, but it was from someone who was uh, selling items from his mother's estate who had passed away. She was over 100 years old. And notice a theme there. You see a bunch of items that I sold this month were from people who are selling things from relatives who passed away. So in that that's a way you could get things for a really good price. I wound up getting these, by the way, for, for $40. Uh, so, um, you know, overall, a nice profit. Did not cost a lot to ship. Uh, it was like $10, $15 to ship these out. Uh, wound up uh, going economy shipping with it, by the way. You want to make sure you do that for these heavier items so you give yourself uh, maximal flexibility in terms of what your pricing is going to be but if you could find a lot of you know a hundred or two hundred thimbles like this even if they're just all assorted um, like these are and especially if they're in the cases that's typically where you'll see them hanging in cases you know pick them up if you could get it for a pretty decent price I would say where you really want to be in terms of pricing with these types of things is around twenty dollars per hundred thimbles plus a case you really don't want to go much higher than that. So uh, just keep that in mind when you are uh, you know, out there searching around. And if you find something like this or anything else in this video, come back, let me know. Put a comment down below in the comment section. If you have a question, let me know. I also like to know of all the things that you saw here. If you've stuck around to this point, thanks a lot. Let me know what is the um, your favorite item that I found uh, and sold. Uh, last month that made this top 10 list. I always uh, interested in hearing that, hearing your thoughts. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Uh, 
very very close to 900 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed yet and you are getting some useful information out of these videos please make sure you subscribe that does help to establish the credibility of the channel make sure you follow me on instagram that's at primetime treasure there's no s that's on instagram come by to the facebook reselling resource center that's my facebook group uh, where there's tons of tips and uh, news and all sorts of useful items and support and question and answer 24 hours a day it's free doesn't cost anything just go down below in the description section and you will see that there also in the description section you'll see links to all sorts of supplies that I have found very helpful and used to succeed in my reselling business so uh, please feel free to click on some of those links purchase some of the items that are in there that does help to support this channel and frankly anything you purchase through Amazon through one of those links does help me out as well so uh, thank you very much also as a little bit of news I will be on the Flippin Hippos um, YouTube um, live show on September 8th at 8 uh, oh no sorry uh, September 9th September 9th at 8 o'clock so um, make that 8 p.m. Eastern time so make sure you come by and check that out uh, you'll see that's a pinned post at the Facebook reselling resource center so you can mark your calendars for that that should be a great time we're going to talk about comic books collectibles pop culture items and all sorts of interesting uh, things related to reselling so I'll see you there and I'll also see you at the uh, um, next uh, few videos I will get back to doing those accounting videos uh, pretty soon I haven't forgotten about it and uh, just wanted to make sure I got this done since it is now a start of a new month so good luck everyone with the new month reselling and I'm looking forward to seeing what sells this month uh, so I could get another uh, one of these videos in with you um, see what sold in September all right everybody I'll see you later have a great day